Hey, do you guys remember Endgame Splatoon 2? Yeah, no, I've tried to burn it out of my memory too, so my bad there. Going in from late Splatoon 2 into early Splatoon 3, there were a lot of concerns about how shooters were going to be treated, especially given that they didn't really get any nerfs and they were dominant at the end of Splatoon 2. Almost nothing from any other weapon class saw a notable usage rate, while multiple of the shooter class did. Now that it's been over a year since that happened though, I figure it's time to reflect back and take a look at if shooters are still OP. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more analysis from me, and let's get Get started. Back in the time of Splatoon 2, there was a meta of the 3.0s, which I covered a while back. It was centered around a meta weapon triangle of dualies, blasters, and umbrellas. And speaking of dualies, they were probably at their peak here. And Perry was a meta pick, Toucher was very good, custom dually sculpture was seeing some use, and this was the most competition shooters have ever had, a class so similar than them that's outperforming them. While some shooters saw some usage rate, for the big end, it looked like they needed a little bit of help. Fast forward some months later, and shooters start to get the infamous mobility buffs, reducing the startup and end lag of almost every shooter in the game. That alongside a lot of other generous buffs, 52 gal having the most buffs in the entire game, led to the point where shooters were dominant at the end of Splatoon 2. So what makes shooters so good? Well, compared to other weapon classes, they don't really have any big flaws, and they're very well-rounded. Their mobility is some of the best in the game, ink efficiency, they have a lot of strong kits, low special costs, and high special output, and solid kill times. Shooters could do pretty much anything standard that they needed to, and that, alongside having so many solid options to pick from when compared to other weapon classes, is part of what made them so good. On top of that, even as we gone into Splatoon 3, there is still clearly some bias to these weapons. For example, the one nerf they did between games was raising the points for special from 180 to 200, and was mostly a default change, not a shooter change. However, a lot of these shooters have gotten their points for special buff back down. Some all the way down to 180, including Jet Squelcher, Splattershot Jr. started there, and ends up 85 of all weapons got there at one point. Along with other random buffs, like the accuracy being changed, and of course, who remembers the beginning of the game where shooters got a ton of kits and pretty much everything else didn't. I still remember most shooters having a second kit before a second Splatana or Stringer kit even got put in the game. The weapon categories were introduced at really lopsided rates. I'm so confused and mystified by the empty squares on the right side of this diagram. I don't see the vision here. Before we look into all the other weapons, knowing all of this history, how good are shooters now? I'm mostly gonna go through this looking at the tier list series I just made, because otherwise this will take forever. But I promise I'll get to some interesting result stuff as well. The very top tier of weapons has two separate shooters in it, the Enzap 85 and both Squeezers, while the tier right below that, still weapons that we frequently see in tournaments, include both the splash matic and Splash Shot. Below that we start to enter high tier realm, but still a lot of relevant picks with tournament results include the 10 tech splatter shot, vanilla jet sculpture, 52 gal, and 96 gal deco, just to name a few. When looking at the list higher up as a whole, there is plenty of other weapons and other classes seeing use. So what happened? First off, buffs. There were a few weapons that got very notable changes. Blasters got intensify action, which helps a lot with their RNG issues. Slosher has its minimum damage of 50, ensuring a consistent two shot. Dualies have much faster rolls now, mainly the vanilla dually, which allows them to keep up better. And we've introduced other strong main weapons, like Snipe Rider, or most importantly, the Splatanas, which have a decent bit of flexibility in their own right, as well as powerful combos between the two firing modes that give them more combat and versatility options than most weapons. Another factor was kits. For example, one of the weapons that had the best chances of thriving in shooter meta was the Rapid Blaster in Splatoon 2, but one of its best kits was stuck with Baller, one of the worst specials in the game. Now, it keeps the same powerful torpedo, but with Inkjet, giving it a lot better of a chance to see use. However, the main reason we see other weapons is their own unique strengths. Shooters might be really well-rounded, but dualies can roll through enemy ink and fight in it. Blasters and sloshers have powerful area of effect hitboxes. Rollers have insane ledge peaking with their one-shot. Chargers have distance one-shot. Splatling's backline status while still having the amount of pain and mobility that they do has allowed them to thrive in many different metas. Brushes have even better mobility through enemy ink than dualies. Brellas, while the main weapons have some problems all have really relevant shields that change the way teamfights happen. Stringers will be 
relevant one day. While shooters might have a lot, they do not have the unique level of strength that other weapon classes do. Of course, that also means they aren't associated with some of the weaknesses these classes have, but that on its own seems like a lot. Venturing outside the realm of my own personal tier list and heading into tournament comps, you can see plenty of examples from a recent major tournament that have only one shooter in their comps, one of these having none of them. So clearly, the unique strengths of other weapon classes are worth picking. So does that explain the whole picture? No, because I have been neglecting one point, something that I haven't said for this entire video. The main reason that shooters are more fair in this game is because it's Splatoon 3 and not Splatoon 2. Remember these weapons with unique one-shots like rollers, chargers, and blasters? Guess what? Weapons have ink armor now. So in Splatoon 2, you don't actually have a powerful one-shot. What about slower chip damage weapons? Tana missiles are going to rain on you every five seconds, so you better be careful not to take any damage. Remember, you're going to be fighting like 20 plus of them per game sometimes if you're a top-level player. Oh, are you Umbrella trying to use your unique shield to influence team fights? Hopefully you don't end up the target of a stingray in which your shield is completely irrelevant as you get lasered by an aimbot across the map. And even duelies, a weapon so similar to shooters, have to deal with main power-up damage up. If you dare try to use your unique rolls for combat, well, too bad. You're gonna be killed in one less shot, having absurdly horrible matchups. Enjoy being one-tapped by Bamboo and two-shot by Splattershot Pro. And even with that, shooters are just going to have a bit better ink efficiency, a bit better points for special, a bit more kit options. So why would you want to pick duelies anyway? I could go on, such as the existence of Kensa 52 basically ruining so many matchups in the game to being nearly unplayable. But the main thing to point out is Splatoon 2 was the perfect environment for shooters, where it had both the abilities and unique specials in that game to completely invalidate all of their hard matchups and weaknesses. You don't have to deal with these area effect weapons because they can't kill you fast enough. You don't have to deal with one shots because they don't exist. Anything slow is going to already be weak, chip damaged, and have paint all over them for you to be able to take them out. The environment was perfect for them. And in Splatoon 3, instead, we have stuff like Tacticooler that actually enables many of these weapons to keep up with the mobility that shooters have. It's just not the same game. So should shooters keep their buffs? I would say actually yes. On the one hand, it's really hard to go back on mobility changes anyway without it feeling horrible ask any machine player. However, there is one thing I want to see changed on shooters. Frankly, none of them should be 180p with how well they paint. Same goes for any good painting weapon in this game. And honestly, I think very few of them should be 190p. The fact that stuff like Vanilla Splattershot or NZAP85 is 190 is kind of ridiculous. And we even started out with things in a much better spot. So I think many of these points for special buffs should be changed back to 200. And that, I think, would be the only adjustment shooters really need. So, a year later, that's my stance on it. Shooters are in a pretty good spot, as are a lot of things, and I hope that patches continue to improve the game. Thanks for watching.